Hey developers, welcome back to the another interesting video in programming fields. I am Umesh Rana and today we are going to dive into the world of Laravel 11 and building a secure RESTful API for user management. We will be using Laravel Sanctum to handle user authentication and generate API tokens to ensure a smooth and secure user experience. But before we dive into the practical example, let's quickly recap what are RESTful APIs and user management. I know you are already familiar with RESTful APIs, but let's quickly revise that. RESTful APIs, so API stands for Application Programming Interfaces and these are a way to communicate and share data among different applications. RESTful APIs follow a specific design principles to ensure consistent and predictable interactions among applications. This separates the application requesting data that is client side from application providing data that is server side. As we know, the client sends request and server processes them and sends back the responses. RESTful APIs are stateless in the nature. So here stateless means each request from a client to the server will be independent and the server does not store information about the past interaction with the client side. Now we will talk about user management in APIs. So user management in APIs involves functionalities like user registration, login, profile access and logout and these are very essential for any application that relies on user accounts. Now why Laravel and Sanctum? Well, we already know Laravel is a fantastic PHP framework that provides a robust and efficient way to build APIs. And the Sanctum is included in Laravel 11 that offers a convenient way to implement user authentication and manage API tokens. This makes your API secure and reliable. So throughout this video, we will build a user authentication API step by step for the best experience, it is recommended to start with a fresh Laravel 11 project. However, feel free to adapt this feature to your existing project if needed. So without taking extra time, let's jump to the practical part quickly. So first thing first, we will create a new brand Laravel 11 application. So let's open the terminal and here we will be creating a new Laravel 11 application using Composer. So in the terminal command line, let's hit Composer, create project, prefer list, Laravel, Laravel. And here we will have to provide the application name. So I will be giving application name as Sanctum REST API. All right, let's hit enter. And here the project installation has been started. Yes, the Laravel 11 project has been created. And here by default, it connected the SQLite database and these default migrations are executed. All right. Now let's CD into the project folder. So we'll have to open Sanctum REST API and here I will open this in the VS Code editor. So the project has been opened in the VS Code editor and inside this .env file, we can see by default, it connected to the SQLite. So instead of this SQLite database, I want to connect this project database with MySQL. So I will change this DB connection from SQLite to MySQL and we will have to uncomment these commented lines. So let's provide the database name as Sanctum DB and let's configure the database username and password. And also let's start the jump server. So we'll have to start this MySQL server. The database has been started. So now in the second step, we will modify the migration. So inside this database migrations, we can see we have the default migrations created by Laravel 11 itself. So firstly, inside this user stable migration, we have three migrations combined together. So I will modify this user stable migration. So after this email, I will add one more field. Let's suppose a string phone number and this will be nullable by default similarly you can add more fields if needed so this is done now let's come back to the users model so inside this models user.php let's add this fillable property and here we will have to pass the phone number field this is done now if we'll come back to the routes folder then inside this routes folder we can see only we have the console and web.php routes here we cannot see api.php so for creating any REST API, we needed to define the endpoint inside this API.php route. Also, if we'll come inside this bootstrap app.php, then inside this, we can see we have the web and 
commands route. So by default, Laravel 11 does not come with API.php route. So you will have to install that manually. So in order to install this API.php route, let's come back to the terminal. And here you will have to type php artisan install colon api. Let's hit enter. And here it is installing api.php. All right. And along with the api.php route, it installed Laravel Sanctum. So by default for managing API, Laravel considers Laravel Sanctum package. Here it prompted one new database migrations has been published. Would you like to run all pending database migrations? So if you are ready with your database migrations, then you can execute the pending migrations by typing yes, else you can skip. So as of now, in our case, I already updated this user stable migration by adding a new field as phone number. So as of now, I don't want to add other fields. So let's continue with this yes. So it will execute the migration. And if you will notice, we have changed this database from SQLite to MySQL and we have not created this Laravel Sanctum DB inside this MySQL database. So if I will proceed with this yes, then it will create a new database for me and all the migrations should be executed inside that database. So let's hit enter. Here it prompted the database Laravel Sanctum DB does not exist on the MySQL connection. Would you like to create it? So we have not created this database. So let's proceed with yes. So it created this database Laravel Sanctum DB and here it executed these all migrations inside this database. Now in the next step, we will have to add has API tokens trait inside users model because after executing this migration, API scaffolding has been installed automatically. In order to proceed with the API tokens, we will have to use this has API tokens inside user model. So let's come back to the user model. And here we will have to import has API token. So let's type use has API tokens. So this will be included from Laravel Sanctum. So we have included this namespace. Now in order to use this has API token straight, we will have to pass it inside this use keyword because in order to call any traits in your Laravel application, you will have to use this use keyword. So we have included this has API token straight as well inside this user model. So we have the user model and migrations ready. If we will check inside this database, then inside this database, we can see all the tables have been created. So database and tables are ready. Now come back to the application. And here if you will scroll down and inside this project folder, if we will check inside this routes folder, we have this api.php route. And by default, this auth sanctum middleware has been added inside this user endpoint. Also, if you will scroll up and if you will check this bootstrap app.php, then we can see it added this routes api.php. Now we are good to go for creating REST API for user management. So now in the next step, we will be creating a controller so that we can write the functionality to create REST API. So let's come back to the terminal. And here we will type PHP artisan make colon controller. So I will be adding a controller as auth controller. So better I can add one directory as API. And here I have given the controller name as auth controller. So basically this will create auth controller inside API folder. I will pass flag as dash dash API. Okay. Let's hit enter. So here it created a controller as auth controller inside API folder. So let's check inside this app HTTP controllers. It created API folder and inside this it created this auth controller. This is fine. And we have passed the flag as hyphen hyphen API. So it generated this default methods as index, store, so, update and destroy. However, we don't need all these methods at all because we are going to create API for user management. So firstly, we will create an API for user register. All right. So we will be using this store function. We don't require this index at all. So let's remove this as of now. And here, instead of a store, I will rename this function as register. And I will change this comment as register 
new user in the parameter we are passing request so instead of this eliminate http request so i will be creating a separate register request to manage user registration process validation so again let's come back to the terminal and here i will create form request as php artisan make colon request register request let's hit enter so it created register request so inside this app http it created a folder as requests and inside this we have this register request okay and inside this we can define our validation rules for managing user registration and firstly we will have to enable this authorization to true so that it will allow to validate the user registration request now inside this rules we can define our validation rules so we can set our validation rules as per our migration so we have the field name as name email phone number and password all right so let's define our validation rule as name it will be required so we'll define required and here i will set mean as 5 and also i will set max to 150 characters okay so i'm just passing the common validation rules you can set more specific validation according to your requirement now similar to name we will have to add the validation rule for other fields so let's duplicate these validation rules and here i will add for email and this will be required and uh, this should be email and also we will have to check for unique email address so we will provide unique and inside this we will have to check from the users table and we can remove these things and after email we will have to add for the password fields so let's add for password this will be required and we can add mean as 5 and max as 25 characters next we have phone number field so this will be required and i want this to be digits and this should be max 10 digits only so i have added the validation rules here now in the next step we will have to call this register request inside this auth controller so instead of this eliminate http request we will call the register request so we will import use app http request and then register request let's remove this eliminate http request and here inside this register function instead of this eliminate http request we will replace with this register request now here i will put dump and die request all so let's save it now we have to test this validation so in order to execute this function we will have to add one route inside api.php so switch back to api.php route and inside this api route we will have to add our endpoint so we can remove these things these are not required let's add route colon colon post because we are going to submit user request so we will be using this post request and here we will have to provide the endpoint name as register and in the second argument we will have to call the controller so in this user management flow we will be creating multiple api and multiple endpoints here so better we can use route controller group function so that we won't have to repeat the controller name again and again for every endpoint so let's add auth controller colon colon class and then we will have to use this group function all right and inside this group function we can add our route now inside this post route we will have to pass the second argument as the function name so we have created the function name as register itself okay this is done and we can remove this eliminate http request this is not required now now we will have to verify this endpoint whether this api endpoint is working so in order to test the rest api endpoint we can use postman or insomnia tool but before that let's start the application so let's run php artisan so yes application has been started on 8000 port now let's open the postman tool yes so inside this url section let's type http colon colon localhost 8000 
slash API because we have added our endpoint inside API.php and that is considered as a REST API. So we will have to prefix this API and then we will have to pass our endpoint name as register. Also, we will have to change this method type to post because we have defined our route method as post. All right. Now inside this headers, we will have to add one property as accept and this value will be application slash json all right because we are expecting the output in the json format now let's click on send and yes we can see we received the validation error messages here and it triggered validation errors for name email password and the phone number field so basically this validation has been triggered from this register request and here we have defined these rules inside this register request. So when we submitted the request, this triggered this validation rules. Let me toggle this sidebar so that we will have the full window. And uh, let me increase the font size as well. So inside this settings, we can see we have the font size. So let's increase this to 15. Indentation is 5. All right, let's close this. And uh, also we can open this in pan just like this so this is fine so now let's try to pass these fields from this body tag as a form data so the key will be name and here we will have to pass the name and next field we have email so let's pass any incorrect email format next we have the password so i will pass password as admin at the rate one two three and next we have the phone number field so I have not entered the 10 digits phone number. So now let's try to submit this request again so that we will able to validate our validation rules are working properly. Let's click on send. Yes, we can see this triggered the validation rules for this email. This should be a correct email format. All right. So let's add a correct email format. And also this said the phone number field must be 10 digits. So let's add this to 10 digits. Let's click on send again. And inside this preview, we can see we have added dump and die and that displayed our API request. So our validation rules are working. We can customize our messages by defining one function as public function messages. And this will return array. All right. We can add this annotation errors messages. And inside this, we will have to return array and here we can pass custom message for rules just like name dot required please enter your name same thing for mean and max we will have to add name must be at least five cats long and also this will be for max and name must not be more than 150 cats same thing for email so let's duplicate this multiple times we will add for email dot required as please enter your email address and next we will have to check for email dot email because we have added this validation rule as email must be a valid email address so we will add this message email must be a valid email address and next we will have to add for unique as well so we have added email dot unique email is already taken please try with other email address let me add for password all right dot required please enter your password password dot mean password must be at least five cash long password max password must not be more than 25 cash lastly we have phone number so phone number dot required please enter your phone number and there will be phone number digits so we will add phone number dot digits phone number must be 10 digits number all right so we have customized the validation error messages. Now let's verify these validation error messages are working. So let's come back to the postman again. And here let's comment 
these form request input data let's try to submit again and let's click on the spread tick yes we can see we are receiving the customized validation error messages if we'll enable this again and if we'll submit and yes we are receiving the api request data now let's proceed with the registration process so inside this register function i will add try catch block and inside this i will import this exception all right now inside this try block we will be inserting the users record inside the users table so we have user model respective to this users table so i will be using users model colon colon create function all right and inside this create array we will have to define the array all right and we are receiving this array from this request attribute so let's add four other fields we have name email password and phone number and we have to encrypt this password before saving it to the database so we will be using hash colon colon make function all right and inside this make function we will have to pass this password and we will have to import this hash so let's import this as use illuminate support facade and then hash all right this will generate the hash password from this given password and we will have to capture this response in this variable as user this is done and on the successful response we will have to return this json response so that we will able to understand the user has been registered successfully so here we will have to return the json response for every api response so better we can create a common function for that and through that function we will be able to return the common json response so for this i will be creating a common helper class and inside that helper class i will be defining the function for returning the json response so let's come back to the terminal and here i will create one class because in laravel 11 we can create any class using the command line itself so let's add php artisan make class and here i will add one directory as helper and inside this i will give the class name as response helper let's hit enter yes so the response helper has been created here inside this app helper directory inside this helper class i will be creating two functions one for success message all right and another for error message and better we can make this function as static inside these functions we will have to receive the parameters from the controller so firstly we will receive message and by default i will set this to null next we will have to pass the data if there will have so we can initialize this with empty array and for the success we will have to define the status code and by default this will be 200 and inside the success function i will return response json and inside this json i will add this array and inside this array we will have to define a status i will receive one more parameter as a status message data and the status code all right so this will be status message we will have this message and if data is there then we will print data and here we will have to pass the status code this is done same thing we will have to pass for error yes so we have added this and here i will set this by default status code to 400 and we can set this status to by default success and this to error in the error data is not required so we can remove this data the status and message is fine this is done you can add one annotation for this this is common function to display json success json response all right and in the parameter we are receiving status string status message data and and the status code as integer and in the return we are returning response let's copy and add this annotation for the error function as well okay to display error json response and inside this param 
we are receiving status message and status code okay this is done yeah this is fine now let's come back to the controller we will have to import that response helper class first so in the name space we will have to use use keyword and then app helper and response helper and now inside this the success of user registration we will call the response helper colon colon success function and inside this first parameter is by default status so that can be optional because we have added the status as success by default and for the message i will pass user has been registered successfully okay and uh, for the data we will pass user here i am passing named attribute and now we have to pass the status code so this status code will be 201 because this is creating a new entry inside this user table all right and here we will have to return this and for the error let's duplicate this line and for the error we will call this error function and inside this error we will have to pass the message as unable to register user please try again and data is not required there only status code is 400 and for any kind of exception we will have to return that so let's duplicate and add it here also we will dump the exception inside the log function so i'll be using this log error and here i will add message as able to register user and i will append the exception message and uh, let's add this log facade here also we can pass the line number so i will pass exception line number so that we can track the exception by navigating to this specific line we will call this get line function so this is done for the user registration all right now let's come back to the postman and here let's try to submit this request let's click on send again yes we can see we have received this success message status as success message user has been registered successfully and we have received the data all right now if we will verify inside the database then inside this users table we can see we have one entry all right so registration has been done now we will be creating the api for the user login so let's come back to the vs code editor again and here we will create another function so let me remove these things all right and instead of this update i will use this as login login user and instead of this eliminate http request i will again create one more request for this login so let's come back to the terminal and here i will make another form request for the login i will add login request let's hit enter yes login request has been created and here i will have to import that login request again so i will call login request and let's import this login request inside this login function and this string id is not required okay this is fine inside this param we will receive app requests login request and its instances request and same we will have to add for this register as well app request register request and its instance as request return json response this is fine now let's come back to this login request inside this request we have this login request again we will have to authorize this to true and inside this rules we will have to define rules as email is required and this must be one valid email address and uh, next for password this should be required only so we have defined the validation rules you can customize the error messages in the same way if needed so let's define messages with the validation error messages all right here we will pass email dot required message will be please enter 
the registered mail address email dot email will be please enter a valid email address password dot required will be please enter your password yes this is done now let's come back to the controller and here again i will use dump and die request all and we will have to execute this function firstly we will have to create one more endpoint in the api.php so let's switch to api.php and here let's add one more route as login and again this will be a post request and we will be triggering this login function because that we have created inside this auth controller now let's come back to the postman and uh, let's open the new request let's copy and paste the same endpoint and let's change this to login also let's change this method as post that this headers we will have to pass accept as application slash json let's click on send again the validation rules are triggered here now let's come back to the body and inside this form data let's try to pass email something password something let's click on send you can see this triggered the validation for a specific email address now let's add these registered email address here and password as well now let's check the form is submitting or not yes the request has been submitted now let's come back to the vs code editor and let's implement the login functionality so again i will use try catch block here to handle the exception this is a good practice to handle your exception in your code and inside this exception block let's copy this line and in the exception we will have the status as 500 here okay and uh, i will concat the exception message here so that we will be able to track the exception all right now let's copy these two lines and here let's add for this login function as well here we will change this message to unable to login please try again and yeah here as well unable to login user now inside this try block we will have to implement the functionality to login the user so here we will have to validate whether the entered email address has been registered in our database or not and the same thing for the password all right so we will have to check the entered email address is correct and that is matching from our database records right so to check this we can use the auth function provided by laravel auth facade and here we will check auth attempt and inside this we have to pass the parameter through that we want to check our authentication so for checking the authentication we are using the email and password field so here this email will come from this request email and the same thing for this password and here we will have to import this auth so let's scroll to namespace and here we'll be using use illuminate support facade and then auth okay auth facade has been imported here now inside this login i will add dump and die so that we can check whether the registered email address is able to log in or not now let's come back to the postman now let's resubmit this request click on send yes so this is returning true when we entered the correct email and password now let's change this to something else now let's click on send again now this returned false here by using this auth attempt function we are able to validate whether the entered email and password is correct or not so here i will add if condition and uh, better we can add if not auth attempt that means if the entered email address or password is incorrect then i will return that response in the json using this response helper function so i will be returning this response helper error error and let's change this message to unable to log in due to invalid credentials all right let's remove this exception and a status code will be 400 so we have added if credentials are incorrect 
then this will return the error with unable to log in due to invalid credentials and in the else part that means if the entered email and password are correct then we will be generating the api token so what i will do i will call this auth facade and then user function that means if the entered email and password are correct then this will return the authenticated user data so i will capture this response in one variable as user let's add dump and die dollar user here let's verify this let's come back to the postman again let's click on send so inside this we can see this returned status error and message is unable to log in due to invalid credentials and here we are receiving 400 status as bad request and now let's try to log in by entering the correct password let's click on send again and inside this preview we are receiving the authenticated user data all right so now instead of this dump and die what we will do we will generate the api token here we will create api token for this authenticated user so i will be using this user implies get token and inside this i will pass a pass phrase as my api token and i want this token in the plain text format so i will be using this plain text token so this will generate the token and here we will have to capture this in one variable as token just like this okay and also we will have to return the response so again we will have to use the response helper success function so better we can copy it from here all right let's paste it here and inside this message you can add you are logged in successfully and inside this data will return the user data along with the token so better i will create one variable as auth user and i will create one array and inside this array i will pass this user key and this user data and also i will pass this token as token and here i will return this in the data auth user and a status code will be 200 here this is fine now let's come back to the postman let's click on submit let's click on this pretty and yes we can see we have received success message as you are logged in successfully and inside this data we are receiving user data and this token all right so again if we will try to log in every time this will generate the unique token so we can see the number of tokens here for this user this is incrementing again if we will check then this is three all right now in the next step we will have to create one more api for getting authenticated user data so here if you will notice inside this login response data we are receiving this user data so this is optional either you can return this user data with the login response or you can directly return the token only so if you are not returning this user data along with this login response then you can return this token only and in the next api call when you want to fetch the authenticated user data you will have to pass this token in this header so let's create one more function inside this auth controller so this function will be basically for fetching auth user data that means this will be for fetching profile data let's create this public function user profile again i will use this try catch block so i will copy it from here and able to fetch user profile data so let's add dump and die auth user when we will pass the token based on the given token the auth functionality will validate that token from this users table because if you will check inside the database then inside this personal access token we can see this generated the token for the user so through this given token this will validate the user from this users table automatically let's come back to the vs code editor and here let's create one more api endpoint 
but for fetching the user profile we will have to pass the token and in order to validate that token we will have to use the middleware for this api endpoint so we will pass route colon colon get user all right and i will call this user profile function and for this route i will apply middleware as auth and sanctum so when we will try to access this user endpoint this middleware will check whether the user is logged in or not that means user is authenticated or not so based on the given token in the header this will validate yes the user is logged in and based on the given token that will fetch the user profile data so let's try to access this just like this and in the headers again we will pass accept as application json if we'll try to make this api request then this said user is unauthenticated why because this is not able to validate due to this middleware because in the api endpoint we have applied this auth sanctum middleware so this auth sanctum middleware is expecting one token and based on that token this will able to validate that user so what we will do we will copy this token from here all right and let's come back to this request and inside this auth we will pass bearer token all right and inside this bearer token let's paste this token now let's try to submit again yes so when we added this token and we submitted this request we can see we are able to fetch the auth user data so this is so simple when we want to fetch the authenticated user data we will have to pass the token only so we will capture this in one variable as user and uh, here i will add one if condition if user data is there then i will return that data in this response here message is optional you can pass or not so i will add message as user profile fetched successfully and in the data i will pass user data and the status will be 200 for the else part if the user data not found then we will have to return this error message all right unable to fetch user data due to invalid token status code will be 400 this is fine yes so here we are not accepting any parameters so i will pass any and return will be json response again yeah this is fine let's come back to the postman again let's click on send yes we are receiving the authenticated user data now let's try to create one more user so inside this register api i will register one more user so let me keep this email same and let's try and if we will try to register with the existing email address then this will trigger the validation error message as email is already taken so let me change this email address as well okay for the phone number uniqueness we have not added any validation so this will accept let's click on send yes the second user has been registered and here let's try to log in using the second user credential so i will add this email address and what i will do i will just copy this token just for the reference purpose so here this token is generated for the first user so i will just copy this token and i will keep this in the clipboard here all right and now if i will try to log in through the second user credential let's click on send then we have logged in successfully and here this generated token for this particular user now let's try to access the profile data inside this auth bearer token we had passed the existing user data here so again if we'll try to send this request then we are able to fetch the first user data now instead of this token if i will try to pass the newly generated token that is for the second user and let's make another request then we can see we are getting second user data here based on this given token so this is how this api token works for fetching the data based on the given token so internally this token is validating the users from the users table and based on this token this is fetching the data for that respective user all right 
So user register, login and profile data, these all three REST APIs are working correctly. Now we will have to add one more functionality for user logout so that we will be able to invalidate the generated token because anyhow if we generated this token then there will be a certain limit for this token but before that time limit if we want to invalidate the token then we will have to create one more functionality so let's add that so inside this auth controller i will create one more functionality this will be for user logout and this is not required any parameter and again this will return json response and i will add function name as user logout let me copy and paste this entire code and here if the given token has a valid user then we will remove that token so i will use user implies current access token and delete function and in the response i will return logged out successfully unable to log out due to invalid token and able to log out due to some exception all right this is done let's send this message here as well okay this is done now we will have to execute this function so again we will have to add one more endpoint here so we will call this route colon colon get logout all right and we will call this user logout function and inside this middleware we will have to again call this auth sanctum we can do one thing instead of applying middleware for every route we can create route middleware group all right just like we did for this controller so every time we won't have to write this so let's check this user logout functionality first so let's come back to the postman and uh, let's copy this endpoint here let's add it let's type logout again except will be application json and as of now i have not passed authorization token here now let's try to submit we said unauthenticated now let me copy the lastly created token that we have generated here for the second user so let's click on this so under this auth let's set this bearer token and let's pass this bearer token as or let's click on send and it returned user logged out successfully and here we don't need to return this user data actually so let's remove that user data data will be empty or even this is optional okay so if the token has been deleted then we want to be able to fetch the user data based on that given token so let's suppose in the user profile api if we will try to fetch the user profile data based on the existing token then it should not return the data let's check this yes this said unauthenticated that means that token is expired or invalidated all right so in order to fetch the user data again again we will have to generate the auth token that means again we will have to log in through this given credential and then in the response this will return the user token but now if we will fetch the user data for the first user that we kept this token for the first user so let's copy this token and now let's pass in this user profile api now let's click on send then yes we can see for the first user still we are able to fetch the user profile data because this token is still validated so when we logged out the user we removed that access token from the database so that access token won't be validated furthermore even if you will try to log out again then this won't allow you because that token is invalidated similarly if i will try to pass the token for this first user here let's click on send yes user logged out successfully and if you will try to fetch the user profile data using that token then it will throw this unauthenticated so this is all about the user authentication rest api using sanctum you can extend this project to the further level based on your project requirement and also you can organize your code according to your need this is just a basic demonstration for how you can create rest api using sanctum in laravel 11 all right folks that brings us to the end of this video on building a restful api for user management with laravel 11 and sanctum 
we have covered the essential steps from setting up the project to implementing user registration, login, logout, and a protected profile endpoint. Remember, security is paramount when dealing with user data. So always implement best practices like password hashing, request validation, and secure token handling. Remember, this is just the foundation and you can customize it and extend this API further based on your specific project requirements. So if you enjoyed this video, consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the programming fields for more Laravel and API development content. Also, don't forget to leave a comment below if you have any questions and feel free to suggest topic you would like to see covered in the future videos. So once again, thanks for watching. See you in the next interesting video. Until then, happy coding.